Fight week has ended, interviews have been done and rankings have been updated. So it's time to try to find the answer of what's next for UFC 303 fighters. Let's check. I'm the Indian XM guy and you are on Fight Book. The next potential super fight in the UFC is Alex Pereira vs John Jones, but that fight is currently not on the table as Jones is being booked with Stipe. So Pereira currently has two options to choose from. First one is obviously next title contender Magomed and Clive who is waiting for his well deserved title shot and second is none other than Tom Aspinall if he beats Curtis Blades at UFC 304 which is not 100% guaranteed. The thing that makes Poatan special has never been the idea that he was unbeatable or that at 37 he is about to go on a GSP style run and rule his division for half a decade. Of course Pereira at heavyweight captures the imagination but with the heavyweight still dealing with its own problems Pereira destined for one more fight cycled at 205 and that is Anclive who is now on a 12 fight unbeaten streak and he is currently ranked on number 1 in the light heavyweight division. He is the clear opponent with no real second choice. If Pereira can win in Abu Dhabi, it's on to 265. Absolutely, it's hard to say just how long we are going to have Fuatan on the top, but we are witnessing something unprecedented for as long as he is there. At this point, it would take either a miracle or a seriously stunning win streak for either Prohaska or Hill to get another shot at Alex Pereira. The fight between these two former champions who lost to Pereira is going to be a great matchup in any case. But if a fight between them is not suitable according to the UFC's ideology and they want to promote their prospects, then the next step is clear. One of them is fighting Carlos Ulberg and the other one is fighting Khalil Roundtree Jr. Diego Lopez has been after this for a long time and he has earned a thank you from the UFC. At this point, the UFC also wants to make him a contender and Dana White also clearly said they would do whatever Lopez wants. And Lopez wants the Ortega fight to be rescheduled for UFC 306 at Sphere. Now this fight makes even more sense but as we know Ortega is now trying to move up to 155 so if it happens then Lopez has his eyes set on former champion Alexander Volkanovski. Although Volk had been a great champ, in the current divisional situation, he is not next in the line for title shot. If he wants to be the next guy after Max Holloway, he has to take a fight. Otherwise, no one knows when someone is gonna leapfrog him. Dolidze took on a hard job while moving up a weight class, although it was one of his best wins due to not being in his weight division and having previously lost two fights in a row, he must defeat a certain type of prospect in his division before taking on the big fight. Kaio Bohayo is now on a 6 fights win streak and coming off a big knockout win over Paul Craig. Currently, he is ranked on number 13 and needs a top 10 fight. So this fight is a must have to guard the ability of both Dolitze and Bohayo. We previously analyzed Anthony Smith's fight with a prospect Bogdan Gusko which is similar to his own form. But as Smith took the fight on short notice and he lost that, we still wanna see him against Gusko who is currently ranked at number 12 and coming off back to back crucial knockout wins. The battle between the two will be great with one needing a win to maintain his status and the other needing a win to prove that he can be considered as an ex-season prospect. It wasn't a spectacular win but it was a win. Gary says that he has moved on from Colby Covington fight and he wants to fight Shavkar Rahmanov now. But fans and UFC both wants Covington fight to happen next. 
as Covington is ranked high, he is confirmed title shot for Gabby if he gets past Covington even with a split decision. A McGregor 2 over card is on the horizon, so Gary needs to be beating that drum. It would be more interesting if Dana can fulfill his promise and let Gary headline UFC Dublin against Covington. If Michael Venom Page is getting so thoroughly outgrappled by Ian Gary, he doesn't have a path to gold at welterweight. And if he does not, then the vast majority of matchups in the division are lackluster ones. My personal favorite would be a fight with prospect tester Neil Magny, who is coming off a fraud check TKO win over Mike Mallott. After flatlining Baryul, the outcome here is only nominally in doubt. Piper made the call out and Craig had accepted it. Craig is 1-4 in his last 5, currently on a 2-fight losing streak. Still, he is a good fighter and has great jiu-jitsu skills. He could give Piper a better competition than Piper is maybe assuming. Last but the not least, another great call out from the event, this time putting Talbot against another fighter who was regarded as a young phenom but has since had to build back. Talbot's decisive win over a very talented prospect in Cameron Simon spoke to his level of ability already, but to see it made manifest over a lesser talent in Janice Kamori made it all the clearer. Talbot is reaching the level of notoriety that he can fight whoever he pleases outside of the ranking. Talbot is ready for the big time and a fight with Adrian Janes should it be booked will put him in exactly that territory. It is rare that the UFC has such a clear opportunity with such young talents. Some other fights that may not happen but I would love to see are Danny Gay vs Christian Rodriguez, Andre Feely vs Billy Quarantillo, Gillian Robertson vs Luana Pinedio and Martin Budai vs Waldo Cortez Acosta. Moreover, Gene Silva vs Drew Dober is already booked for UFC Denver which is definitely going to be a good one. And that's all for now. Hit the like button, share your thoughts in the comment section and then do whatever you want.